Welcome to this video from Kemp Technologies on how to configure the Loadmaster for high availability in the Azure Cloud. To ensure high availability for applications and web services, a pair of Loadmasters needs to be installed and configured within the Azure Cloud. To begin installing a Loadmaster, you will need to have a Microsoft account and access to the Azure portal. Here we see a view of the portal for a new user who has currently not created anything. To begin setting up a Loadmaster, you'll need to click on the Marketplace icon. Within the Marketplace, thousands of applications are available, but here we're going to search for Kemp and move on to select a Loadmaster instance for this demonstration. In the marketplace, there are several virtual Loadmaster images. Some are charged on an hourly basis, and there is one free version to which you can apply a purchased perpetual license. For the purposes of this demo, we'll use the free version. Kemp's documentation provides guidance on the size of virtual machine needed to run the various Loadmaster images. Note that there is a charge for any Azure resources you might consume, even though in this case the Loadmaster itself is free. So next we move ahead to create a virtual machine with this Loadmaster instance. After clicking Create, we will need to set up a host name for the Loadmaster, a username, which incidentally isn't ever used after this, and either a password or an SSH key. For simplicity, we'll use a password, and you'll need to remember to keep a note of that password. We then move on to the optional configuration step to look at setting up the network. The first thing we need to do is to create an availability set. This will ensure that our pair of Loadmasters are running in separate hardware platforms within the Azure Cloud for added availability. Next, we need to do some network configuration. In particular, setting up a domain name which will be shared between the two Loadmasters. One interesting thing is that the endpoints for the Loadmasters are automatically configured so at this point it is not possible to change them. However, we can make a change after we've created the virtual machine. Next we move on to creating a resource group with a unique name for our pair of Loadmasters. And finally, back in our Create VM Blade, we click to create the virtual machine with the configuration information we've provided. In doing that, we're presented with some information about the instance in which the Loadmaster will operate. Uh, this has to do with the pricing tiers within the Azure Cloud, so you will need to select a a particular uh, pricing model that suits you and uh, accept the terms of use before moving on to purchase the particular Loadmaster instance. As we said, this one is free, but you will still need to pay for the Microsoft resources that are consumed to run this virtual machine. then click Purchase to move ahead. 
in the dashboard you will see the Loadmaster instance being created. This can take about five minutes. And here we see our first Loadmaster running in the Azure Cloud. Now we can edit the endpoints, which as I say were created by default during the uh, instantiation of the Loadmaster. We can now go and edit those because we will need to have separate endpoints for the two different Loadmaster instances to avoid a clash. The values that we edit here are 84, 41 for the public port. Um, this is for the TCP connection for management purposes. And we'll also edit the um, SSH port to provide access to the Loadmaster as well. And here we see the configuration for the uh, SSH. Uh, in this case, we are setting the public port to be 221 instead of the default of 22. So now, in our view of virtual machines, we can see our fully configured first Loadmaster running. Also in this view, we can click on Add and search again for Kemp to select another free Loadmaster instance for our second part of the pair. And again, in a very similar manner to the first instance, we go and create a second Loadmaster, uh, ensuring this time that we join the same availability set. And reviewing the network settings, we see that we have the same domain name and subnet, so we know that this is uh, part of the, uh, the same environment. We also need to ensure that our second Loadmaster is in the same group as the first one that we created. So now we have all the configuration done for the second Loadmaster, apart of course from uh, setting the various endpoints which we'll do later. So we can move on to create the second Loadmaster. Again we accept the uh, terms of use and the uh, pricing for the uh, VM instance that we're running. And again, after a five minute or so delay, we see our second Loadmaster running. Now, these are two separate instances that are not yet configured uh, to be a high availability pair. As I mentioned earlier, we now go and configure the endpoints to ensure that we have unique access to the second Loadmaster as well. And finally, we select our first Loadmaster instance and create a load balance set. Here we see the configuration details for setting up a load balance set. The overlay shows the parameters that are used to configure the probes for the load balance set. Uh, it should be noted that uh, the probe interval should be set to 15 seconds during creation of the load balance set, but can subsequently be reduced to a lower value, typically 6 seconds, to provide a shorter failover interval. So here we see the load balance set configured for the first load master. Now we move on to ensure that the second load master is also connected to that same load balance set. And again, we go through a very similar uh, configuration process, but this time we connect to the existing load balance set called www. And here we see the second Loadmaster HA2 also configured for the same load balance set.
We know that the load balance set is operational, so now we can move on to configure the two load masters as master and slave nodes. I've skipped a few steps to get to this point, but basically you would need to log into each load master through the web user interface, the WUI, make sure that they're properly licensed and operational, and then proceed to the Azure HA configuration. So here for the node that we will make the master, we insert the IP address of the slave and make sure that we have the health check port set correctly. This will allow the master to take control of the HA pair. Similarly for the node that is to become the slave, we put in the address of the master and again ensure that the health check port is correct and this will allow the slave to become the slave in the pair. As you can see it's currently in standby mode. And once the configuration becomes effective we now see that the master is the active node, the slave would obviously be the slave, and we have a fully operational high availability pair of load masters running in the Azure cloud. There are a couple of documents used in the uh, preparation of this demo. Uh, they can be found in the Kemp documentation site and there's also a further set of uh, information and materials in the Azure site on Kemp Technologies as well. Thank you very much for watching this demo.